So since right around 2014, collagen peptide supplements have quickly become one of the most popular supplements in America, originally gaining popularity because of some of the OG influencers like Dr. Axe claiming that collagen could be used to help treat things like leaky gut syndrome. Collagen supplements have since then become far more popular in the anti-aging community for its supposed unique ability to improve skin and joint health. But as with most supplements, there's usually a little bit of truth dressed up in a whole bunch of marketing garbage. And so essentially what I want to do in this video is walk through some of the uh, studies on collagen and talk about um, some of the more well-founded benefits to collagen supplementation. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, collagen protein is the main component of connective tissue in the body, such as skin and tendons, ligaments, and cartilage, but is also found in other parts of the body, such as blood vessels, eyes, and the gut. Now, it's also one of the most abundant types of protein in the human body, making up roughly 25 to 35% of total uh, body protein stores. And what makes collagen protein unique is that it's made up of three long chains of amino acids known as alpha chains that are composed of repeating sequences of the amino acids glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline, and are wound together in a very specific structure known as a triple helix that allows it to form five fibers that provide support and strength to the body. Now, the human body can naturally produce collagen protein. However, as we age, we naturally produce less of it, which means that as we age, it may be more beneficial and more essential to consume more collagen protein through the diet. Now, aside from the unique structure of collagen protein, it's also a fairly unique source of some very specific amino acids. And because the structure of the triple helix is made up of repeating sequences of glycine, glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline, collagen protein is hands down the best dietary source of these amino acids. Now, glycine is the most common amino acid that is found in collagen protein and makes up roughly 33% of total amino acids that are found in collagen, followed by uh, proline and hydroxyproline, which each um, make up a roughly 14% of the total amino acid content of collagen. Now, there are other amino acids that are found in collagen protein. Uh, for instance, alanine makes up roughly 7% of the total amino acid stores, whereas arginine makes up roughly 6% of the total amino acids of collagen. And then there are a handful of other um, amino acids that are found in collagen as well. However, because uh, collagen is primarily made up of glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline, it's largely believed that a lot of the um, biomechanical and the biological effects of collagen ingestion come from primarily these three amino acids. Now, one of the most commonly claimed benefits of collagen supplementation is benefits to skin, hair, and nails. However, before we dive into the effects of collagen on hair, skin, and nails, I do want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, Element. Now, one of the most important and well-established ways to improve your health and performance is to optimize your hydration, and this is what Element makes so easy. Element is a perfectly proportioned electrolyte mix of sodium, potassium, and magnesium that makes it extremely easy to help meet your electrolyte needs that are extremely important for optimizing your hydration status. Now, aside from the science behind Element's ability to help keep you hydrated also doesn't hurt that it tastes freaking amazing and has zero sugars or fillers. Now, I personally like to drink Element when I am in the sauna because of how many electrolytes you lose in the sauna. And so if you are anything like me and trying to optimize your health and performance under somewhat extreme conditions, I can't more highly recommend Element. And right now they're offering my audience a free sample pack of an eight serving of Element for free with any order but this deal is only available through the link that's in the description of this video. So make sure to follow the link down below or go to drinkelement.com slash nutrition library to snag this offer. Now, the first study we're gonna be looking at considering skin health is this one where the researchers concluded that, quote, a growing body of evidence demonstrates the efficacy of collagen peptides to improve parameters of skin physiology in preclinical studies. Collagen peptides were shown to increase hyaluronic acid production in dermal fibroblasts and to improve skin barrier function by increasing the water content of the stratum corneum. Furthermore, collagen 
collagen peptides induce the synthesis of collagen on the mRNA and protein level, as well as the production of stronger collagen fibrils, promote growth of skin fibroblasts, and induce fibroblast migration. In contrast, clinical evidence for the efficacy of collagen peptides in human skin is still scarce. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first report of clinical evidence for the efficacy of collagen peptides to improve dermal collagen fragmentation and thus to counteract a hallmark of aging. And the researchers go on to hypothesize about the possible mechanisms of action involved in collagen ingestion's ability to improve skin health, and they state this. The exact mechanisms of action whereby collagen peptides modulate fibroblast function is poorly characterized to date but certain peptide sequences within the collagen peptides may be specifically recognized by the cell membrane of fibroblasts. A number of studies have been performed on other cell types such as osteoblasts, osteoclasts, and chondrocytes, which originate from the same stem cell line and share certain characteristics such as the capacity to produce collagen. Furthermore, the dipeptide proline hydroxyproline and hydroxyproline glycine, which are abundant in circulation after collagen peptide ingestion, might contain a certain level of bioactivity in fibroblasts. Now, one of the commonalities that you'll notice between this study and other studies like it that are examining the effects of collagen on skin health is that one, it does appear to be effective, and two, they're not exactly clear why why it's being effective yet. Now, in this study that was looking into the effects of collagen ingestion and skin health and UV radiation, researchers concluded something similar, noted the ingested collagen is digested and absorbed in the digestive tract and appears in the blood partly in a peptide form. Possible explanations for the effect of collagen peptides are as follows. First, antioxidant activity, and second, other biological activity of the CP-derived peptides. It has been reported that proline hydroxyproline has a chemotactic activity for cultured fibroblasts. Although it is still unclear whether proline hydroxyproline mediates the function of ingested collagen, it is tempting to speculate that proline hydroxyproline affects the signal transduction pathway of epidermal keratinocytes and or dermal fibroblasts and antagonizes the effect of UVB irradiation. And again, in this study on wound healing, you see similar proposed mechanisms of action. Quote, human clinical trials and animal studies have demonstrated that the ingestion of gelatin and collagen hydrolysate enhances wound healing, especially diabetes induce chronic wounds and pressure ulcers. After the ingestion of collagen hydrolysate, proline hydroxyproline increases in human blood. Proline hydroxyproline is also generated by the degradation of endogenous collagen in wound healing sites as summarized in figure 1. Endogenous and food-derived proline hydroxyproline can enhance wound healing by stimulating the growth of P75 NTR positive fibroblasts in the wound healing site without adverse effects on healthy tissues because it does not significantly affect quiescent P75 NTR negative fibroblasts in healthy tissue. The small collagen peptide proline hydroxyproline is a low molecular weight growth initiating factor for fibroblasts and plays a crucial role in wound healing by initiating the proliferation of fibroblasts with stem cell markers P75, NTR, and peptide transporters. And so when you look at all of the research that's been performed on the effects of collagen ingestion on skin health and wound healing, there's a couple of different things here to note. One is that there's not a ton of clinical data quite yet. And the second thing is that pretty much all the preclinical data that's been performed in vitro and in rodent trials does appear to be somewhat consistent. Now, the mechanisms of action here appear to be that the ingestion of collagen protein provides substrates such as amino acids and specifically the amino acid uh, peptide uh, proline hydroxyproline that appears to have some direct effect on dermal fibroblasts that actually endogenously produce collagen protein. Now, when you consume collagen protein or collagen peptides or even collagen through uh, food sources, um, those proteins aren't directly integrated into tissues in the body. What appears is happening is that uh, they're broken down into individual amino acids, but those individual amino acids do appear to have some type of stimulating effect on uh, the cells in the body that actually produce collagen. Now, what's interesting here is that the amino acids that are in collagen also appear to have some type of antioxidant effect whereby they're able to kind of scavenge uh, free radicals in the skin and help to uh, prevent oxidative damage as well. And what's interesting is that when you look at some of the research that's been performed on hair growth and nail growth, Growth as well, it appears as though the same mechanisms of action are involved in collagen's ability to also improve hair growth and nail growth as well. Now, the second
second most commonly claimed benefit of collagen supplementation is benefits to joint health. And where collagen supplements may be of particular use is in instances of arthritis. Now, in this study in particular, the researchers noted that, quote, this study found that UC2, a nutritional ingredient containing undenatured type 2 collagen, significantly improved knee function in osteoarthritis subjects by day 180. Based on the data presented herein, we believe that additional research is warranted both to confirm and to define these findings more extensively. The etiology behind EC2's impact on osteoarthritis symptoms Symptoms is not known. However, undenatured type 2 collagen has been shown to protect animals against the onset of joint damage in both osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, experimentally induced arthritis models. This protection is hypothesized to occur via the induction and migration of T regulatory cells to the area of inflammation and damage. The proposed role of TREGS may also have relevance to the moderation of osteoarthritis symptoms, as in vitro studies have found that TREGS produce an anti inflammatory cytokine that stimulates chondrocytes to synthesize cartilage matrix components. And this study here dives a little bit further into these proposed mechanisms of action by stating that, quote, the hypothesis is that in a similar way as food proteins, native collagen will induce oral tolerance. Native collagen would modulate the response of the gut immune system, gut-associated lymphoid tissue, to switch to a tolerogenic response against collagen. This will train the immune system to not recognize collagen joint degradation products as damage-associated molecular patterns and avoid joint damage produced by the immune system activation. In two rat studies where osteoarthritis was induced, Native collagen reduced limb pain in the animals. In one study, they also observed a decrease in plasma and urinary CTX2. Now, there are a few things worth pointing out about these two studies, and the first one is that they both used a very specific type of collagen protein known as undenatured type 2 collagen. Now, uh, type 2 collagen is a type of collagen that is almost exclusively found in joint cartilage, and the fact that it's undenatured simply means that it hasn't been altered um, through the process process of excessive heating or the acidic process um, that a lot of uh, collagen manufacturers use to turn collagen protein into collagen peptides. Now, the reason this is important is that it appears as though the benefits of type 2 collagen, undenatured collagen, on joint health in arthritis patients is specific to this type of collagen. And the reason for that is that there appears to be some type of immune regulation from the ingestion of this type of protein. Protein. So if you're looking for joint uh, properties from your collagen supplement, it probably would behoove you to find this specific type of protein. Now, one of the more controversial health claims surrounding collagen intake appears to be its potential benefits to muscle growth. Now, in this study in particular, the researchers were investigating the effects of collagen peptides on muscle growth in an elderly population experiencing sarcopenia, and the researchers concluded this, quote, the findings of the present study have confirmed previous results that 60 minutes of resistance exercise performed three times per week is well suited to significantly increase muscle mass, muscle strength, and motor control in subjects with sarcopenia class one or two. Moreover, the study has demonstrated that the combination of resistance exercise and collagen peptide supplementation resulted in a more pronounced improvement of body composition as indicated by a significant increase in muscle mass and decrease in fat mass compared with placebo. In addition, muscular strength was significantly improved after collagen peptide intake compared with the training program plus placebo. Now, what's interesting about this study in particular is that the researchers gave some fairly novel reasons as to why collagen peptide supplementation might have some benefits to muscle mass. Now, the first reason they gave is that uh, collagen peptides appear to be fairly high in nitrogen content. Now, it's worth noting here that collagen typically gets a really bad rap in the bodybuilding community for being fairly low in the amino acid leucine, uh, which is uh, typically looked at as the amino acid that initiates muscle protein synthesis, and this is true. However, because collagen does appear to be fairly high in nitrogen content, it does appear to be able to improve the nitrogen balance and therefore prevent muscle protein turnover, um, which can theoretically improve markers of muscle catabolism and um, 
um, eventually lead to improvements in muscle um, anabolism. And the second possible reason that they gave is that collagen peptides are fairly high in arginine and glycine. Now, arginine and glycine are amino acids that are required endogenously to produce creatine. And so because creatine carries some obvious ergogenic benefits as well as benefits to muscle mass, it is possible that collagen peptides provide substrate to your body to produce creatine, which thereby um, improve muscle mass and muscle performance. But not only do collagen peptides appear to improve markers of muscle mass and muscle strength in elderly populations dealing with sarcopenia, they also appear to um, carry some benefit in young healthy populations as well. In this study in particular, the researchers concluded that Quote, in conclusion, after 12 weeks of hypertrophy resistance exercise training in combination with collagen supplementation compared with a placebo, we found significantly higher body mass and fat-free mass and a slightly more pronounced increase in strength in the collagen group compared to the placebo group. Individuals in the collagen group showed a significantly higher number of upregulated proteins and significantly more pathways associated with resistance exercise compared with placebo after the intervention, indicating stronger effects from the combination of strength training and supplementation on the skeletal muscle proteome than strength training alone. And so what's interesting here is that even though collagen is fairly low in the branch chain amino acids, leucine, um, isoleucine, and valine, it still appears to have some level of effect and stimulatory effect on muscle protein synthesis or at the very least, a preventative effect on muscle protein catabolism. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to replace a whey protein shake with a collagen protein shake simply because whey protein has been shown and demonstrated to have a fairly optimal amino acid profile when it comes to building um, muscle tissue. However, collagen protein may be a good um, uh, adjunct to add on to whey protein to help balance out the amino acid profile to further maximize uh, muscle building potential. Now, aside from uh, collagen peptides' ability to improve muscle growth when in conjunction with exercise, um, it also appears to have some type of effect on just general growth during adolescence as well. Now, in this study in particular, the researchers concluded that, quote, in summary, collagen may play a major role in optimal growth and development at critical stages of life and may have a positive influence on bone remodeling. Our results indicate that prolonged dietary collagen intake seems to stimulate bone formation during important periods of growth and development, influencing both bone formation and bone resorption biomarkers. And again, the reason for this does appear to be because of the unusually high amount of the amino acids glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline. In the study in particular that was examining the effects of proline and hydroxyproline, the researchers concluded, quote, proline and hydroxyproline are unique amino acids for maintaining cell structure and function. There are remarkable species different differences in proline metabolism and requirements among vertebrate animals during their life cycle. However, emerging evidence consistently points to proline as an important regulator of cell metabolism and physiology. Therefore, proline can be considered as a functional amino acid for humans, livestock, species, poultry, and fish. This promising role of proline is expected to be translated into enhanced efficacy of nutrient utilization and improved health in organisms. And then when it comes to glycine, the most abundant amino acid acid in collagen protein, there also appears to be some evidence to suggest that it might also directly increase growth hormone levels. And so interestingly enough, Collagen protein appears to not only affect muscle growth, but also just generalized growth during adolescence and throughout development. And so collagen peptides may be a both cheap and affordable uh, source of protein for individuals looking to meet their protein needs and therefore um, meet optimal muscle growth parameters and um, just optimal growth throughout adolescence as well. Now, one of the more interesting benefits that I found while doing research for this video is that collagen intake also appears to have some some level of benefit to cognition as well. In this study in particular, the researchers noted that, quote, the major findings of this study were that following the daily ingestion of collagen over a four-week period, there were significant changes in the participants' brain structure as well as improved cognitive function. Now, the super interesting thing about this study is obviously that not only did they find an improvement in cognitive function, but also in brain structure, and the researchers go on to um, explain this as one of the possible mechanisms of action. Furthermore, the mechanisms underlying this beneficial effect 
effect is unknown. COG et al. reported an increase in the expression of brain-derived neurotrophic factor in the hippocampal formation by collagen in vitro and a significant increase in passive avoidance learning. In another study, the oral administration of oyster hydrolytic peptides in normal mice enhanced their spatial learning and memory capacity accompanied by the upregulated expression of BDNF and neural cell adhesion molecules. These findings in animal models suggest that the ingestion of collagen protein might contribute to the change of brain structure and improvement in language cognitive function through the upregulation of BDNF expression in the brain. Now, BDNF is a neuropeptide that gets a lot of attention in the nootropic community for its supposed ability to improve neurogenesis, and it does appear as though, at least in animal trials at this point, that collagen protein may improve the expression of this specific protein. However, this has not been looked at in humans yet and is just speculated as one of the possible mechanisms of action whereby um, collagen is able to improve cognition as well as brain structure. Now, aside from this mechanism, it's also quite possible that uh, collagen peptides are able to improve cognition secondarily by improving sleep quality. Um, there's been a handful of trials specifically looking at glycine, the amino acid that's most commonly found in collagen protein. And what they found is that uh, glycine is fairly reliable at improving markers of sleep, markers of fatigue, as well as cognition secondarily to improving markers of sleep and markers of fatigue. Now, it's easy to hear all these possible benefits of collagen and to think it's going to be some wonder miracle supplement. However, in my personal experience, this has not been the case at all. It's entirely possible that the benefits of collagen protein supplementation are secondarily to just merely increasing overall amino acid um, distribution to the body. And so for individuals that are already consuming a relatively high amount of protein, there may not be a ton of benefit to consuming extra collagen on top of uh, your protein intake. However, it is quite possible that by adding a collagen supplement, you're able, you might be able to balance out the amino acid profile of your entire diet by adding in some additional glycine, uh, proline, and hydroxyproline, and thereby experience some marginal benefits of collagen supplementation. Now, when it comes to collagen supplementation and choosing the right supplement for you, uh, there are a few things to keep in mind here. And the first one is that um, there are several different types of collagen. And technically, there's about 28 uh, different types of collagen. Now, there are six primary forms of collagen, um, and they go by type 1 through 6. And um, the main thing to keep in mind here is that when you are choosing a collagen peptide supplement, these are typically supplements that are made from the uh, hide of cows and are kind of hydrolyzed and go through a process of taking uh, the collagen protein and breaking it down into collagen peptides to make it more bioavailable. And this specific type of protein typically only contains type 1, 3, and 5, which is a good thing. Um, these uh, these peptide molecules can do a good job of, again, supplying optimal amounts of glycine proline and hydroxyproline. So if you're looking for pretty much any of the benefits of collagen, um, th this is a really good supplement to choose because mainly it's super cheap. However, if you're going for the joint benefits of collagen intake, you do specifically need to get a collagen uh, peptide supplement or just a collagen supplement in general that contains type 2 collagen. Now, as far as I'm aware, the only supplements that contain type 2 collagen are things like bone broth protein, as well as just supplements that are labeled type 2 collagen. Now, when it comes to food sources of collagen, it is worth noting that food sources of collagen are not hydrolyzed, and so they haven't gone through that uh, kind of pre-processing and pre-digestion. So typically, these forms of collagen don't absorb as well. However, they still might be a fair source of collagen peptides. And these would be things like pork rinds, just regular liquid bone broth, as well as gelatin, which might actually be um, hydrolyzed and might actually have a higher absorption rate than things like uh, pork rinds and bone broth. Now, when it comes to dosage, the main thing to keep in mind here is why you're using collagen peptides. If you're using type 2 collagen in order to experience benefits to arthritis symptoms, 
it might only take a few milligrams or maybe even micrograms of collagen type 2 oral ingestion in order to experience benefits there. However, if you're consuming collagen in order to increase your overall amino acid intake and overall glycine, proline, and hydroxy uh, proline intake, you will need several grams of uh, collagen peptides in order to experience benefits there. And so I would usually typically stick to anywhere between 10 to 30 grams of collagen peptides um, in order to improve and increase your amino acid intake. But other than that, guys, make sure to check out the link down below to snag a free sample pack of Element. And other than that, I think I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.